the Yankees take three out of four from the Minnesota Twins. And the Minnesota Twins are always going to lose to the Yankees. Um, now, they did win the last game of the series, but this Yankee team is really, really decimated right now. Really, I mean, on a crazy level. For a team that was so healthy for a long stretch of the season, generally speaking, they are completely just battered and bruised, and it's a roster that's completely unrecognizable. So the Yankees would take three out of four. You, you, you kind of take it and run with it, but it's the Twins. And the Yankees' dominance over the Twins, it, it's really odd. It, it doesn't matter what year it is. I mean, the last 20 years, the Yankees really beat up on the Twins, and that happened again. So that is the general theme in terms of this series. But moving forward, again, the Yankees, there's definite cause for concern. The Yankees are only three up on the loss side against the Rays, who are coming to town this weekend. Um, so, again, for me, the hope is to not get swept. The hope is to not get swept. If the Yankees can take one of three. I am okay with that. If they take two of, th- if they win the series and take two of three, that's really, really good. That's excellent. Um, so again, the key is not getting swept. Just finding a way to win a game. And I, I think the Yankees at home. I think with good pitching, they can find a way to win a game. I don't think it's a crazy ask. Like I will be upset if they get swept. Don't get me wrong. I'll be very upset if they get swept, even with the roster they have. I think runs gonna be hard to come by for the Yankees, but hopefully with good pitching, they can win. And that you can't say enough how big of a win that was against the Rays, the last game of the series at Tampa. That two to one win where Montas pitched really well and, and Holmes almost blew it. That was a really big win. And the Yankees were able to kind of carry that into the twin series. Now, there's so many transactions that took place. Uh, one, you know, big ones that, that come to mind. Anthony Rizzo hits the IL um, with headaches. This might have been as a result of the epidural, but they're not 100%, 100% sure if that's what it was from. But Rizzo on the IL, TJ LeMay was on, on the IL with that toe issue. Now, the hope for me is that with these breaks, that these players can come back and really perform to the best of their abilities. So I don't mind it, but look, like it might even if they do come back, it might take them a while to get going. So there's a lot of players out. I mean, just coming. I mean, position. Let's just talk about the position players. There, there's pitchers out, but let's just talk position players. You got Rizzo, Lemayu, Benintendi, Matt Carpenter. That comes to mind right there. Uh, and I might be forgetting some. I and mean, Giancarlo Stanton, kind of, he got hurt again in this series, and I think he's on the mend. He he pinched in the last game of the series, but Giancarlo Stanton was basically not involved in this series because of a a foot injury. He fell the ball off his foot, so. You know, there's also Harrison Bader, who, you know, it's in a different category because he got hurt as a Cardinal. Um, but, you know, he's out. And then pitchers, yeah, he's just starting to get some back. You got Nestor Cortez back, and he didn't really go too deep in the game, but he pitched pretty well. But there was, I mean, not just that, there's unrecognizable names. Like Ronald Guzman, who was terrible in the one game he played. I mean, for that, I mean, if that is like his first and last game as a Yankee, oh, wow. That is about as bad as it gets. Ronald Guzman and Miguel Aduar has been kind of back and forth um, a lot, and he's up, and Esteban Florial has been playing quite a bit, and you got Tim Castro, Marwin Gonzalez is playing a lot. So it's a lot of the depth guys that are really playing regularly and players that were in AAA. Um, as well, the Cabrera has had a, had a pretty big role, although he didn't play, um, he didn't play, I, I think, in, in Game 1 or 4. I'm not sure about game one, actually, but he didn't play game four. No, he did play game one. Um, Josh Donaldson also on paternity leave. So that's another thing. And we'll talk about Donaldson uh, and and positional changes. Um, Isaiah Conner-Falefa is now playing third base. Now, I I don't know if that's going to be, like, definite. Like, once Donaldson returns, I do suspect Conner-Falefa goes back to short. And then uh, Oswald Peraz is kind of the odd guy out in that scenario. Although, you know, with Labor Torres is kind of... Not great play, like Peraza could play second, which isn't ideal, but anyway, let's jump right into it with the four-game series here. And the Yankee pitching was very good, I'd say. Um, Pretty solid. Uh, Starting pitching and bullpen was pretty good. And Jamison Tyone was okay. Five innings, two runs. Didn't really look great, but again, you know, I'll take five innings, two runs all day long against Chris Archer, who... Also, five innings, two runs. Wasn't spectacular, but he did a, did all right. Um, it's not even worth g- getting into the different lineups. Um, 
they were all strange. Like, that's it. They were all really, really strange. But first inning uh, for the Yanks, they score. And, and it's Aaron Judge with, leadoff, uh, with a one-out double. And Judge continues his amazing, amazing, amazing season. He is now up to 55 home runs uh, with about 24 games left in the season. So he really could get there. I mean, it, it really, all he needs to do is hit a home run about every four games and he ties the re- and he ties the record. That really is, I don't think it's a foregone conclusion that he gets there just because you never know. You could go on a six, seven day spell that could mess the whole thing up. But he, you know, the way he's been, he can do it. So Judge gets that double. And then with two out, Josh Donaldson. Josh Donaldson thinks he hits a homer, but it goes off the wall. The judge scores, but Donaldson gets thrown out at second. This was a Josh Donaldson. You can't do that. You you cannot be. You know he always tries to pimp home runs. Like you haven't been good this season, and run out of the box. You're a veteran. Run out of the box, and so Donaldson gets thrown out. And, and you, you, I mean, it doesn't cost them. They win the they end up winning the game. But that's you know good good on Donaldson to get the RBI hit in the first place. But bad on him to to get thrown out at second. That should have never happened. If he's running out of the box, that's a, that's a double. So. Uh, remember, uh, I should have mentioned this at the top because they did make an impact. The return of Gary Sanchez and Gio Rochella, and also the return of Carlos Correa as a Minnesota twin. All three of them really had a good series. Uh, I-, I need to check the stats, but they were impactful, if nothing else. So in the third, former twin Marwin Gonzalez uh, hits a solo shot, makes it to nothing. So a couple of unlikely sources hit home runs in this game and in this series, but Marwin Gonzalez right there makes it to nothing. But then in the fifth, um, the Twins tied up, and it's thanks to Gary Sanchez. He takes Tyone deep 473 feet. Yeah, 473 feet. Um, it's a Sanchez homer, his 14th of the year, ties it up at two. You, you kind of knew that, that Sanchez was going to do something, and, and that was a big one. So we're tied at two. We go to the six. Greg Weiser comes on, and Weiser pitches a scoreless six. There was a lot of Greg Weiser in this series some good, some bad, but Weissert, um, you know, gives you a score of six. And then at the bottom of the sixth, a two-run homer for Aaron Judge off of Trevor Miguel. Um, so Judge at that point is 54th homer of the year, um, and that's the big blow of the game. So Aaron Judge makes it 4-2. He continues to be ridiculous. He's not a human being. Uh, and Greg Weiser uh, gets two outs in the seventh. They bring on Wandy Peralta. Oh, no, sorry, just one out in the seventh. So, again, a, a little, you know, a couple of walks by Weiser, a bit of a mixed bag here. So, really, for me, Greg Weiser, I think he's been used too much. Like, I understand, and, and also another injury here, because there's, uh, there are so many Lou Trevino uh, back spasms. So, Trevino back spasms. Um, so, he was, he didn't pitch in the series. Um, and so a lot of Greg Weissert, unfortunately. And Wandy gets out of the jam there in the seventh. So in the bottom of the seventh, Isaiah Connor Falafa, the former twin for a few days uh, this past offseason, he hits his second homer of the year. And he wouldn't be done there, Isaiah Connor Falafa, in this series. Off of Emilio Pagan makes it 5 2 Yanks. Uh, Wandy finishes up the eighth. And then the ninth, Clay Holmes goes 1 2 3. So the Yankees take game one of the series. Game two gets washed out. Uh, due to uh, inclement weather. What that unfortunately did was it took Garrett Cole out of the mix for the Rays series. So that sucks. So Cole now gets pushed to the Red Sox series in Boston, and he doesn't pitch well up that way. So to not have Cole for that Sunday Ray game, not what you want, but there's nothing you can do about it. So they move it to Wednesday, the the doubleheader. Uh, Domingo Herman pitches game one. Garrett Cole pitches game two. And game one was a crazy 12-inning game. The Yankees won. And and, and look, the Twins, they they made four errors. The Minnesota Twins did not look like a very good baseball team this series. They just didn't. But all the games were pretty close. Nah, I guess that's not entirely true. Two of the games were very close. The other two were kind of close. So, you know, in this one... Um, the Twins jump out to the early lead off of Vermont, and it was the debut uh, for Louis Verland, uh, Varland, uh, for the Twins. He was their starter. And in the first, it was a two-run homer for Jose Miranda. Gives the Twins a 2-0 lead just like that. Then in the fourth, um, 
you know, Herman, with two outs, Herman's kind of cruising at this point, settling in, but J.K. gets an infield single. Herman's not a very good uh, defensive pitcher, not, not a great fielder. And then Gary Sanchez gets a lucky single. Esteban Floreal completely misplays it, kind of goes back on it and drops in front of him. So bad play by Floreal. Inning extends, and then Gilberto Celestino gets an RBI single, makes it 3 nothing Twins, but the Yankees fight, fight back. And, of course, it starts with Aaron Judge. Judge, his 55th homer, makes it 3-1. Herman ends up pitching six innings, giving up three runs, and Herman's been pretty consistent lately. Um, you you got to like what you've been getting out of him. Uh, you know, six innings, three runs, it's not, like, amazing, but it's decent length, and he keeps in the ball game. So, bottom of the sixth, Griffin Jacks comes on and allows a two-run homer to Glaber Torres. So, Torres, it's his 19th homer of the year. A big homer for Glaber. Give him credit. That ties it up at three. Just like that. Then in the seventh, Wandy Peralta goes one, two, three. In the eighth, Jonathan Lewisaga. Uh, is able to pitch a scoreless eighth inning. And then in the ninth, Clay Holmes goes one, two, three. So, let's see. In the bottom of the ninth, Esteban Florial has a chance to win it. Runner on third, two out, hits a grab ball at the middle, and Carlos Correa makes a great play to get Florial out. So the game almost ended right there. But the Yankees' ineffectiveness to score an extra inning rears its ugly head, but they're able to get it done. Uh, they do eventually win. So in the t uh, Clay Holmes pitches a scoreless tenth as well. So good job by Clay Holmes in the series was a good, you know, a good step up after he really struggled against the Rays uh, in that last game. Uh, then let's jump to the eleventh. Ron Marinaccio, give Marinaccio credit. He pitched a pretty good, a decent couple of innings. Marinaccio goes scoreless to the eleventh, and then the bottom of the eleventh off of Michael Fulmer, the Yankees almost win it. There's bases loaded, no out, and R Ronald Guzman has a full count. And he grounds into a 3-2-3 three, three double play. Um, Guzman goes 0 for 5 with four strikeouts in that huge double play. Yeah, not exactly the best debut for Ronald Guzman. And then Marlon Gonzalez is a pinch hitter, grounds out. So we go to the 12th. And in the 12th, the Twins would score. Um, off of Marinaccio. It's an RBI single for Celestino. Makes it 4-3. But give Greg Weiser credit where he holds it. Carlos Correa pops out against him. And let's remember that Correa Weissert matchup. Pops out, and then Miranda flies out. So it's a one run game, which in extra innings, you get that runner on second. You can easily come back, and they do just that. Isaiah Conifalefa, who has really been a clutch player for this team, he's had a lot of big hits this season. Um, and he gets one here. An RBI single scores Marlon Gonzalez, and it makes it 4 4. Then, um, after a Floreal strikeout, Conifalefa steals second. And then Jose Trevino, uh, it, it appeared as if Jose, Jose Trevino had a game-winning RBI single, but I guess Conor Falefa got a bad read on it. And so he is held at third, but then Trevino is caught in, in, in a rundown. But luckily the Yankees avoid disaster. The Yankees are a terrible base running team. Let, let's just be completely clear about that. They really are a bad, and really are a bad base running team. They try to get Conor Falefa out at third, and he's safe. And that was important. Now, Peraza, who had a really good game, I have to mention, as well, Peraza had three hits in this game. Um, he does fly out to shallow left, so he doesn't get the game winner. But, as Waldo Cabrera, who had been 0 for about, like, his last, like, 24, 25, something like a lot, gets off the schneid with a walk-off RBI single. For, so, Oswald Cabrera, good piece of hitting, goes the other way, gives the Yanks the 5-4 win in Game 1, and it felt much needed. And then Game 2, you had Garrett Cole on the mound against uh, Joe Ryan. For the Twins, Garrett Cole, and the Yankees needed length, and he, and he gave it to them. Um, you know, because the Yankees used a lot of bullpen arms in that first game. Cole goes six and two thirds, gives up one run, a homer to Correa. Carlos Correa, you know, and, and he went homer again. Um, 14 strikeouts for Garrett Cole. So it, it's a dominant outing, and it's good because Cole really struggled. It's one of Cole's worst starts this year was at Minnesota. Granted, I'm sure that lineup was definitely stronger than this one, but still, a good job by Cole to to really, really pitch an amazing game. Um, and so, yeah, in, in the top of the third, though, Carlos Correa homers. Uh, it's the one mistake Cole makes. It's 17th homer of the year for Correa. Gives them a one nothing lead. But then in the fourth, the Yankees finally break out. And, it's a great, and it is a grand slam by Isaiah Connor Falefa. His second homer of the series, and, you know, it's kind of interesting how the Twins were the team that traded him to the Yankees. He never played for the Twins, but he he certainly does damage against them, and he makes it 4-1 Yanks right there.
And let's jump to the seventh. Good job by Lucas Licky. A really big strikeout against Correa. Um, Correa being the tying run. Um, and he strikes out Correa. And it stays at 4-1. Licky pitches a scoreless eighth. And then in the, in the bottom of the eighth, it is a bases clearing double by Aaron Hicks. So, you know, makes it 7-1 from 4-1 to 7-1. Uh, you know, I like Hicks more as a right-handed hitter. He does that as a righty down the left field line. Gives the Yankees a 7-1 lead, and Lucas Lickey finishes it out. So Lickey ends up going two and a third, scoreless innings, gets the save, and the Yankees win 7-1. They clinch the, the series victory. And so now we go to game four. So this one had looked promising, but it's a stinging, it's a stinging loss. It is former Yankee Sonny Gray, who pitched pretty well. Sonny Gray pitched pretty well against Nesta Cortez, who also pitched pretty well. Um, didn't go as deep, and I guess they were, you know, being cautious about Nestor coming off of the IL. He only threw 58 pitches, but, um, you know, for the Yanks, it, um, let's see, for the Yankees, they would jump out to the lead, and Miguel Andujar hits his first homer of the season, so good for Miguel Andujar, who you know, really had struggled a lot at the major league level recently, but this was a good night for Andujar. He homers, uh, gives the Yanks a 2-0 lead, but the Yankees hold this 2-0 lead for a while, but in the fifth, it's the former Yankees that get going. Gio Rochella singles, and then it's an RBI double by Gary Sanchez to give the Yankees, uh, to cut the lead to 2-1, to one, and so Nestor's out. Clark Schmidt comes on, and eventually, it's an RBI single by Nick Gordon. Makes it 2-2. Two, two. Um... But give Clark Schmidt credit because Clark Schmidt would pitch a couple more scoreless innings. Uh, and so we're through the seventh. And in the eighth, Wandy Peralta comes on. This is where things get interesting. This is where things get controversial. With one out, there's a ground ball to uh, Marlon Gonzalez at first. He throws to Peralta. Peralta kind of bobbles it a little bit. He he gets the foot on the bag before Cave, but they rule him safe. And under and they, they review it, and the call on the field stands. It was a close call. Wandy had the ball, but kind of, it might have been up against his chest, not in his glove. So, in my opinion, whatever the call on the field was, was going to stand. Unfortunately, it went the Twins' way. And unfortunately, there's repercussions. After a strike out of Kyle Garlic, this was a questionable move by Aaron Boone. He brings in Greg Weiser to face Correa. I know that Weiser got Correa out the day before, but I would have went with Jonathan Loisega, who was available and warming up the next inning. I go Loisega versus Correa. Unfortunately, Carlos Correa, uh, arch em you know, arch enemy of the Yankees, hits what would be the game-winning two-run homer. His 18th homer of the year makes it 4-2. Correa off Weiser, and that stings. That, that should not have been the matchup. We go to the bottom of the eighth, and the Yankees, they, they get going a little bit. Jorge Lopez comes on, and it's a lead-up double by that guy, Aaron Judge. Then Glaber walks, and then kind of Falefa grounds out. And so it's first and third, one out. Kind of Falefa is still second. Bad at bat by Marlon Gonzalez where he strikes out. Just a really poor at bat there. Um, so now it's second and third, two out. And Miguel and Duhar walks. And on the final pitch, there's a wild pitch. So Judge comes on to score. Kind of left and moves to third. And so it's first and third, two out, 4-3 game. And the uh, the Twins bring the lefty in, um, Thielbar, to face um, Giancarlo Stanton. So Stanton pinch hits. I personally there would have went with Jose Trevino. I think Trevino, you know, he's more of a of a singles hitter. He's really good versus lefties. I know John Carlos Stanton traditionally is good against lefties, but Stanton, you know, he's a bit of an all-or-nothing type of guy and really more of a nothing type of guy. And look, Stanton deserves a bit of credit because it was a long at-bat. But ultimately, Stanton strikes out. I, again, I would have went Trevino, um, but it's John Carlos Stanton, so, you know, people aren't going to question it. And so the, the score remains, uh, it's a one-run uh, deficit. We go to the ninth, and Ryan Weber comes on and is able, it's a little ugly, but he's able to pitch a scoreless ninth. So we go to the bottom of the ninth, and Trevino hits a hard smash down the line. He pinch hits for Higashioka, um, and at this point, they, they left uh, Field Bar in there. Then Oswald Peraza gets the rally going. He singles. And now the Twins bring in Michael Fomer, flip Aaron Hicks around, but Aaron Hicks surprises me. Aaron Hicks gets a double, but it was unfortunate. Because now it's second and third one out, and it's Judge with the automatic intentional walk. And you can't love that. And so it sets the stage for Glaber Torres. Bases with a one out down one. And I'll say this. Glaber did get screwed by the ump. The 2-0 pitch was a bit high. The 2-1 pitch was 
way outside. So at worst, it should have been a three-one count, and Glaber strikes out. So there's that side of it, and there's also Glaber Torres is about as unclutch as they come. And this is look, I know he has all the walk-offs. I, I get all that. And when he came up, he was a clutch player, truly. But Glaber Torres has been, he's not someone you want up in the big spot. He's just not. And then Isaiah Connor Falafa ends the game on a ground out. So a really tough loss for the Yankees, one in which, you know, with the Yankees twins the way it goes, usually the Yankees find a way to win that one, but it doesn't happen here. And the Yankees lose 4-3. They win the series, though. They take three out of four. And now it's a key, key series home against the Rays. The pitching matchups. Drew Rasmussen, who's been very good lately. And he hasn't really faced the... I mean, he hasn't faced the Yanks in a while. Um, let, let me see here if, if he's faced them at all this season. Um, yeah, he has not. So interestingly enough, the Yankees have not faced him. But he's been... Very, very good lately. Uh, this will not be easy. Uh, and he'll go up against Frankie Montaz, who did really well against the Rays last time out. So that'll be an interesting matchup. Hopefully Montaz can continue, you know, what he had going there. And then, you know, you can't feel great about this matchup. It's Corey Kluber, who has really done very well against the Yankees, versus Jamison Sion. And then game three... I believe is TBD on both sides. I really don't, I couldn't even guess what direction the Yankees will go. And I thought Clark Schmidt, you know, for the Rays, it's TBD. Uh, they'll probably go with some opener and then a bulk guy. I would imagine the Yankees, they might go on. I mean, they might have to go untraditional as well. So it's unfortunate they lost, you know, the, the, uh, the ability to, to have Cole in the series. I don't think they go Clark Schmidt because he went three innings uh, tonight. So we'll see where that goes. But for the Yankees, uh, I'm okay with it if they go one at one of three. I, with the state of their roster, I'm okay with it. If you go two of three, awesome. That is great. If you can go two of three, and if you get swept, you, you got you got some problems. You really got some problems, uh, and hopefully that doesn't happen. But again, Yankees beat the Twins three out of four, and now have a very very critical series. Their last uh, their last series versus Tampa, and it will be at Yankee Stadium.